Well, some of you may know him for going through drills with an unlit cig in his mouth, but I know him as a former national champion at Florida State. He is undefeated as a mixed martial artist and undefeated as a D.C. defender. Reggie Northrup joining us tonight from Arlington. Reggie, what's going on, man? Hey, how's it going, man? How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for joining us. Uh, before we start here, uh, I got to ask you, who's the tougher Reggie, you or Barlow? Oh, man, I don't know, man. I think Barlow got it, man. <laughs> oh, man. I guess you have to say that. So back home at Audi Field this week, uh, tell our viewers why the D.C. defenders have the best fans in the XFL. Man, we got the best fans, man. They're just so turned up. And they rowdy, you know, and they're they gritty and rowdy, man. They talk trash to our opponents. You know, they boost us up. They uplift us when we in tough moments and stuff. You know, um, it was real crazy, man. That first game, man, I felt the energy. It was just wild, like, being out there on that field. We got them backed up, you know what I'm saying, on their on their 10, you know. Got the whole section right behind them throwing limits. You know, styling the game out a little bit more, you know. So that was like an extra time out. But it was it was crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I'm sure you've seen some crazy environments in college, but that was probably a whole different ball game. Uh it just looked different on TV as well. So uh Yeah. I mean I've seen I think, way bigger, crazier crowds, but yeah. As far as like the personality and the character <laughs> and, the, and the rowdiness, man, yeah, that's that they awesome. They feel like you would think it's 100,000 people at that game. <laughs> you know, That's so. awesome. So let's talk a little bit about you. Um, obviously, you see a lot of these guys who are dual sport athletes in football. Maybe they play baseball. Maybe they run track, basketball, whatever. I think I've seen some in WWE. Uh, why MMA for you? Oh, man. Um, man, I've been involved in the martial arts world for a little while, man. A long while. Uh, my dad, he's a third degree, fourth degree black belt, Aikido, Taekwondo. Um, he also is a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu now, you know, he's 58. Um, so I always kind of been around that. In um, high school, I wrestled with the state twice. Then um, I transitioned and, you know, I mean, I just played football my whole life, man. But then um, I was with the Rams for a while. And then uh, during the off season, I would go train at this Muay Thai gym. And that's when I really started really getting into it, working on my striking and stuff. And um, then, you know, long story short, back playing football, 2020 came when we was in the XFL. Then the, um, everything kind of slowed down, the whole world shut down. And I always was interested in MMA. I always said that I would, you know, give it a go, you know, once I was done playing football. But um, uh, that opportunity came in 2020. Um, everything was slow. MMA was the only sport that was still thriving. So, you know, and I always was interested in it and was I was really familiar with it. So um, I gave it a go. I went and trained for three months, three months, uh, three, four months before my, well, no, actually like five before my first fight. It was an amateur fight and I went out there and I turned out to be a natural. Um, I beat the dude in like first round in like a minute and 10 seconds. And um, it, was, it was cool. It was in front of my hometown. It was very, it was, it was, it was exciting, but uh, it was adrenaline rush, man. I needed an adrenaline rush, man. Everything was shut down. Everybody was quarantined. And, ah, man, so that's, and from that point on, I just hit the ground rolling. I had like four fights after that. Keep training every day, and I would cross, I would cross train and do like some seven on seven and, and footwork drills with some of my football guys. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and other times, so I was getting a lot. I was definitely getting a lot of cross training there. Um, so I just been. I figured I was able to do both, man. I still feel good, you know, physically as a football player. And um, I, I love the game of football, man. Football is my main love, my first love. You know what I'm saying? So it was hard for me not to, you know, to hang up the cleats. Not just yet. I still got some uh, longevity and some youthfulness in my legs. My body feel good. Um, so, yeah. When you're out there practicing or in training camp, obviously you've been all over the place in your football journey. Do you feel like being a trained MMA fighter puts kind of a target on your back where guys know about that coming in and they just want to kind of like out-tough you or be a tough guy and show that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you? Uh, 
Actually, man, it's funny you say that, man. It's actually been the quite opposite. Huh? <laughs> yeah, guys don't really try to go, you know, walk my way in a confrontational <laughs> manner. But the crazy wow. thing is that I shock everybody because once you get to know me and know the real me, I'm real, I'm fun, I'm goofy, I'll get along with everybody, and I'm a peacekeeper, you know what I'm saying? So I make it real hard for you to even feel that you need to, you know, come at me like that. So, right. yeah. Interesting. That's I don't cool. really, I don't really have too many. I don't have issues and stuff like that. Not diffuse issues in a calm, <laughs> less non-violent manner. So, cool. everybody, yeah, I know. A good move. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I know Greg Williams obviously has an aggressive scheme, which fits your style of play. What has it been oh, like yeah. playing for him? Oh man, it's been cool, man. He's just old school. I like old school. You know, I like the old school football players and, you know, he's old, his style of coaching is very old school, but it's, um, it's needed, man. I feel like in the day, in today's game, man, the game has got soft, but, uh, you know, Greg's having Greg as a coach, man, really like it's refreshing knowing that, you know, still guys is, that, that know real football, you know, understand how guys should be on that field, especially how guys should be on the field on defense. So. It's exciting, man. I was actually with him briefly in uh, I was actually with him briefly back in uh, 2016 with the Rams. I was on the P squad, and um, he was there with the uh, that last staff right before they hired uh, McVay. Right. Yeah, he's been all over the place. Uh, talking a little bit about this week, heading into the matchup with the Battle Hawks. Obviously, both teams two and zero. Uh, do you know if you guys have to fly on the same plane as St. Louis tomorrow or Saturday or whenever you're going? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to D.C. We're coming home, baby. And, oh, yeah, we on that plane. We share planes with the teams that we fly with. Um, last week, you know what I'm saying, you heard the D.C. Defender Symphony on that plane. You know, it was real turned up. We had our speakers going, and the Vipers had to listen to that, that whole flight back. We'll have to have the flight back. We Everybody went to sleep. We were tired. You know, we ain't going to hear us. We turned up. We gonna, I was going to say, man, if you didn't hate losing yet, you're going to hate losing in this league. I mean, you guys you aren't going to lose, but the opposing teams are not going to be happy about that. That's crazy. They're going to hate flying with us. You're going to get some music, some, some song. Oh, yeah. We singing everything. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys share – you share a practice facility with them as well? Yeah, we do. It's crazy. Okay. Is there any advantage, you think, playing them – sharing their facility and kind of seeing them a little more often versus maybe playing the other seven teams in the league? No, they just another team. Um, we seen what we seen on the film and we going to go out there and execute to the fullest extent and impose our will on their team. It's like, we're going to be playing on doing every other team that we come in front of. So um, we got our game plan and we know what we're going to do. So it won't even really matter what they got going on over there. You know, we DC defenders, we shutting it down, especially the defense. And we know yeah. the offense going, you know, from our juices, and the whole team going to be deadly. That's just how it's going to go. Yeah, I thought it was a cool yes. detail. The quarterback you're going against this week, A.J. McCarron, won a national title in 2012, actually 2011 as well. And then mm -hmm. you came with Florida State right after that and won one. So for college football fans watching this game, they're going to recognize some names. I know that uh, Florida State was obviously a huge opportunity for you. Uh, what do you think about your Seminoles and the state of the program right now? Oh, yeah, man. Awesome, man. It's refreshing to see them boys back in the winning side, in the winning column. They got 10-plus wins this past season. We, ain't see, we haven't seen that. That was last time we got one of those was, like, I think when I was there, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe the, yeah. maybe the class after I left. But um, – yeah, it's refreshing. Uh, and the cool thing is, I think they're expanding the college football playoffs next season, so yeah. more opportunity for them to get in there, you know, and get a shot, regardless of if they, if you know, God forbid, they do get a loss or two, you know, along the way during the season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so some rapid fire here for you. I want to get to know your teammates a little bit. Uh, best trash talker on the D.C. Defenders? Ooh. Best trash talker. <laughs> Greg Williams. 
<laughs> That's a great answer. Uh, fastest guy on offense. Fastest guy on offense. Ooh. That's a good one. We got some pretty fast receivers. Mm. Oh man, that's a tough. One. We got a lot of fast guys on there. I'll say Lucky Jack, Lucky Jackson. Who lifts the most? Hmm. I would probably be in there, but not really. Um. Hmm. Maybe one of the linemen. Yeah. Maybe one of the linemen. I might. That might be me. Yeah, I, I assume my own time. Shoot, I just went to a boxing gym <laughs> last night. Yeah. I did a boxing class just to get a sweat in. So <laughs> who uh I, I guess a lineman as well. Who do you know who eats the most on the team? <laughs> Ooh. Santos. <laughs> oh wow, not a lineman. <laughs> That's funny. Santos. Uh, there you Every go. Every time who? I see Santos, he's stuffing his face on the bus on the way to meet <laughs> and practice. Gotta eat. Who's the who's the funniest guy on the team? Hmm. I don't know, man. We got a lot of funny guys. We probably got the funniest team in the league. <laughs> I got, got that vibe team. when I was in I was in Vegas for the game, and I got that vibe on the sideline that you guys like to have some fun. So <laughs> we got about we probably got we got about five solid funny guys. We got about five solid guys on the um. We got about five solid guys on the team that's like really funny. I know I'm one of them. <laughs> uh, if you're doing like an Oklahoma drill and you can take anybody from D.C. one-on-one, who are you taking? What you mean? Am I, and I can take somebody for one-on-one? Just like someone that would raise your level of competition or someone who's oh. always at you at practice kind of pushing you to oh. do better. And, Armstead. Yeah. Armstead. Yeah. Right, Quell. All right, that's a good one. All right, Reggie. Well, thank you for your time. Stay safe down there in the weather. D.C. Defenders, St. Louis Battle Hawks coming up on Sunday. That is the Black Dragon, Reggie Northrup. Thanks for your time, Reggie. Appreciate it, man. Y'all check me out. Instagram, follow me on Instagram, Reggie Northrup. Check out my highlights. Oh, hey, I'm a future light heavyweight champion of UFC coming up soon, too. So y'all mark y'all. Y'all remember that, right? This down.